And we welcome you to this very special Memorial Day tribute episode of the Gym Masters Show Live. Good to see everybody from all around the United States and Canada and worldwide. And it's an honor and a blessing to have you with us. We always have a lot of fun in this show. We always have a lot of great guests. The show is always something a little bit different. It's an entertainment lifestyle talk show. We launched it about four weeks ago. We've had so many extraordinary guests that we have featured here on the program. And it's an honor and a blessing and a joy to have you and you and you and you and everybody from all over the country. Thanks for all the love and the support. Thanks for all of the great comments, the likes, the sharing. We have been hearing from all across the United States, Canada. We've heard from Europe. We've heard from Australia, Asia, Italy, Ireland, England, Spain. Uh, it's been truly a blessing to have this show here for you again. I'm a professional television and radio host. This is what I do for a living, journalist, uh, actor, voiceover artist, writer, producer, stage MC, the whole kit and caboodle. And so many people for so many years have asked me to do something like this online to create the Gym Masters show. So as you know, I always post positive uh, commentary on my Facebook pages with Masters Mantras. I'm always looking to inspire people and lift people up and bring joy into their lives and empower people. So out of all of that, so many of you wanted me to create this show. And again, we've had some funny episodes with comedians. We've had uh, musical performances. We've had Renee Nesbitt from Celtic Woman and Rocktopia and Celtic Heart. We had Rain Pryor, daughter of Richard Pryor, brilliant playwright and comedian actress. We had Dan Goggin, who created uh, the phenomenal Broadway hit nonsense with us as well and so many incredible people tomorrow night from uh, a world of incredible acting in new york and hollywood and so much more in 27 years on the cbs soap opera guiding light from 1992 to 2009 liz kiefer will be with us here tomorrow night as well we have a whole bevy of amazing guests joining us sometimes we have guests sometimes we do fun segments sometimes we take you on location it's a whole mix of incredible things we do here on the Gym Masters Show Live. So if you're just joining us, we're here every night. That's right, every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And we stream and we simulcast worldwide on Facebook and YouTube at Gym Masters TV. So all you do is you go to my uh, Facebook page, Gym Masters TV, or my YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. You can like the page, subscribe to the channel, and you'll see all the archived episodes with all the great guests and all the fun and, and comedy and, and light moments and deep conversation and so many cool things that we've had an opportunity to do here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Share the links, have watch parties, do all the great things you guys have been doing. Again, it truly moves my heart. I really appreciate everything that you've been doing thus far. I have a very special guest that we're going to welcome in just a moment. And he is, he is a gift to the world. He is class, he is integrity, he is credibility, he is talent. Uh, he is all heart, he is all compassion and empathy. He's a brilliant award-winning actor, but more than that, he's a gentleman, he's a scholar, he's somebody who really has inspired so many people. Uh, through his brilliant career, in television and film and on stage, but also all the things he does off of television, out of the movie limelight and off the stage. He is a uh, person that gives back to the community. He's a person who gives back to humanity. And a lot of my friends do that. And I'm similar to that as well. And that's why I think we're all kindred spirits. A lot of the folks you've seen on the Gym Master Show live series, they're people who really like to lift others up and make the world a better place. And this gentleman, who's again, a dear friend, uh, the first time I actually met him, and we'll show some photos, a little photo collage as well, was when I was um, commissioned, tasked with interviewing him on a national PBS special called The Italian Americans. They were producing it in the PBS studio. It was to air nationally. And my wonderful friends and colleagues at PBS said, Jim, we would love for you to host it. And you're gonna interview Tony Lobianco. And I said, Tony Lobianco, oh my God, that is fantastic. I've always admired his work and his uh, integrity and his ability and his craftsmanship. He loves his craft, he loves people. And it was a brilliant, brilliant meeting and interview. And we had so much fun in the studio. We talked for a, a length of time after the interview as well. Um, it was just an immediate kindred spirit sort of situation that happened. Subsequently, he's been, uh, 
Uh, we've been linked together at a lot of events, uh, galas and stage performances and so many other incredible things. We've stayed connected. He, his lovely wife, Elise, uh, through events, through just emails and phone calls and texting and, and wishing each other well in our careers and our lives. And we've all become tremendous friends and we've been in a lot of social events and so much more. I want to take you through, well, first of all, you saw it in the open there. This good looking gentleman here that is the one and only, the brilliant award-winning actor, legend, Tony Lobianco. He's here with us for this very special episode, Memorial Day episode. I asked Tony, I said, Tony, I would love to have you as a guest on the Gym Masters show live. And I said, you know, we could work out whatever date's good for you. And, uh, you know, we'll make it easy breezy. He was so, he and his lovely wife, Elise, were so immediately responsive. They were like, you tell me when and where. And then he suggested Memorial Day. And I said, oh boy, that would be fantastic because I know he's very, very involved in a lot of events and a lot of things that happen over the course of Memorial Day. But he is somebody that is just absolutely tremendous. If you talk about somebody who's a class act, you've got to have Tony Lobianco on the tip of your tongue. Uh, here is when Tony and I first met, and this was at PBS when I was interviewing him for that national PBS special, The Italian Americans, and it was terrific. And we, again, we've stayed in touch ever since. We've been at so many different events. This is in New York City. When he played, he, he wrote and directed and produced and starred in The Little Flower, which was this extraordinary one-man play that uh, his honor first, and then so many um, incarnations of this, and it became the little flower, which of course was is really the nickname for Fiorello LaGuardia. It means, Fiorello means little flower. And he starred in this brilliant, brilliant play, and he was spot on. He was the spitting image in tone, in content, in presentation of Fiorello LaGuardia, one of the great mayors of New York City. This was that night, one of those nights when he performed it. And uh, there was a little gathering afterwards as well. So tremendous. He's just, he can, if you look at his body of work and all of the incredible um, performances and the, the range of acting ability, it is tremendous. I was looking back and I was just, oh my God, I forgot he was in that and he was in that police story. And of course the French connection and so much more. There's another great shot. This was on stage as well. I was emceeing a, a concert and he was our special guest for the concert as well. Here's with another dear friend in New York City, Sal, the owner and operator of Patsy's Italian Restaurant, an amazing place I highly recommend you go for an amazing Italian dinner and so much more. And here we are in New York at another fabulous event with his lovely wife, Elise Lobianco. Uh, just so tremendous. Love this couple. Love these people. And again, they are so wonderful. And again, see them out and about on town, a very, very dapper looking couple as well. And again, it is uh, truly my honor to have an opportunity to, to welcome Tony to the show. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some of the amazing things that he has done. You may remember some of them as well, go through a little bit of the, uh, the collage here. Look at all of these incredible photos that we were able to present here. And there he is as Fiorello LaGuardia. He was tremendous in that. Of course, in the French Connection, remember Tony was in the French Connection as well. Of course, that movie patterned after another dear friend that we just lost uh, last year, Sonny Grasso, the New York City police detective who that movie really was patterned after and uh, we're friends with the family of Sonny as well. And Sonny Jr. is watching. Good to see you, Sonny Jr. Um, of course, again, so many brilliant performances. And as I mentioned, an extraordinary range of performances uh, as well. And if you have uh, followed movies and you followed television, then you know Tony Lobianco. And uh, he always laughs when I tell him my mother, Helen, uh, always enjoyed him when he was on one of the soap operas and he was Dr. Joe. I always remember <laughs> telling him about that. And he laughs and he says, God bless your mother. And there he is, of course, as the extraordinary uh, Fiorello LaGuardia. And I mentioned Sonny Grasso, the French connection. There is Sonny Grasso as well, the extraordinary Sonny Grasso, another dear friend who we just lost uh, just recently. Again, an amazing man. 
And again, so much wonderful memories that we have here that we're sharing with you on this uh, particular broadcast. And he's again, a true gentleman. He's uh, a brilliant actor and uh, he did not write this intro. He did not fax me this intro. This is my uh, intro coming from my heart. Uh, I wanna welcome him on board. It is uh, my pleasure to welcome the one and only Tony LoBianco. Tony, my hat off to you. How are you, sir? I'm wonderful. I some intro. Thank you so, <laughs> so very much. That's really great of you. It is my pleasure. How have you been, and how have you been dealing with this uh, this whole pandemic situation and everything sort of coming to a halt in the way that it has? Yeah. Well, my lovely wife Elise and I have uh, been. We were fortunate. We are fortunate to have a place in Maryland, a farm that we went to. Uh, uh, escaping New York City, uh, our apartment in New York City on uh, March uh, 18th. Mm -hmm. We've been there ever since. Yeah. And I love the outdoors, of course, as most people do, and, and love working on the farm. Uh, and that's been basically my time. I've been swinging a pick and digging, <laughs> digging holes and really enjoying it. Tremendous. Look forward to it every morning. Wow. And I've been doing it for six, seven hours a day. Mm. And, uh, uh, it is. It has been. It, it has been a, 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 a true blessing mm -hmm. uh, to get back to the earth, and I and I think that's uh, pretty much where we have to go as people. Yes, getting back to the earth and getting back to to people. You see, mm -hmm. we're we're starting to lose it. Uh, we're starting to lose that contact with our our fellow man. And uh, Memorial Day is a perfect day to. Uh, meet and, and 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 appreciate what those fantastic human beings did so many years ago uh, and gave us the opportunity to be Americans, to be able to enjoy our freedom, to be able to uh, remember what it was like as a history lesson and something we should never forget. And we are forgetting it, of course, we're, we're losing we're losing our way with all the technology uh, we're losing our human contact mm -hmm. and unfortunately and these people uh, gave their life around the world 66 thousand eighty six lost mm -hmm. their lives in in Europe giving up their lives in France and Germany and Belgium you name it mm -hmm. they were there in, in Normandy and what have you Right. And we should never, ever forget what they have done. And that should be an example of which we grow on, not something that we forget and think of it as a holiday and have a, you know, think of it as a day off. It's not a day off. It's, it's not a day, day off. Of exactly. Because a lot of people do do that. A lot of people just, you know, they'll have the barbecue or they'll go to the beach or the park or whatever it may be. And then they will forget that there's a reason for Memorial Day. It's a time to, to truly pause and to remember and to, to count the blessings that we do have because that's as a result of the efforts made previously, right, Tony? Absolutely, if, if it weren't for them, we'd be speaking German and Japanese. And, that's right. And living and not living in a, in a country uh, that we enjoy, certainly not a democracy. And, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're threatened once again with uh, the possibility of living under isms. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have, uh, uh, we fought off a lot of isms, uh, communism, you name fascism, and you can go on and on. Right. And we were lucky enough, uh, possibly in this coming election, to fight off another ism. Uh, that is that that could get us into big trouble, and uh, we must really uh, concentrate on what has been done in the in the past history, and 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 remember it, and make sure that we preserve what we were given, All the of freedom them. that we were given, the freedom and the, and the blessings as well, yeah. Tony. Uh, you were born, of course, uh, in Brooklyn, Anthony Lobianco, uh, proud Italian American. How did you first get into acting? What was it about performance and entertaining and acting that really 
inspired you early on in your in your youth? You know, it goes back, I'm happy to say, to a teacher, a teacher in school, a high school teacher who took an interest in me. And it was she, Patricia Jacobson, whom, by the way, I have been in touch with some 60 years later. Wow. And, and uh, I've had her to one of the, uh, before she's seen, she's seen my Broadway performances and, uh, and also I had a uh, performance done in Florida, in Naples, Florida, uh, and had her come uh, maybe, I think it was three, three years ago, four years ago. And, and she sat right in the third row and I was uh, devoted the whole show to her. It was her inspiration uh, that, uh, Whatever she saw in me, uh, she uh, saw something to save, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to a vocational high school uh, in Brooklyn. We, I had no interest in certainly uh, mechanics or woodworking or anything that the school was offering. Uh, but it happened to be a, uh, they happened to have a commercial art class that mm -hmm. my brother took before me. And I took it as well. He had talent for it. I did not, <laughs> but I did have the, 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 the fortune of meeting Ms. Jacobson and she as a speech and drama teacher, uh, uh, helped me with this speech and she wanted me to enter a contest mm -hmm. for the city fine for the city. And I did. And, uh, I won for my school. I won for my district. Wow. And then I won for Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And there I was representing in the city finals. I was representing Brooklyn in a, in a contest, and mm -hmm. then I and then I didn't I didn't win, but I did graduate. And uh, and the next thing I I did was think, well, what what did I accomplish in, in school? You know, I had a tryout with the Brooklyn Dodger rookies baseball team, and mm -hmm. uh, I would have loved to have done that, but I wasn't yeah. good enough. Even though I had uh, uh, was the all star first baseman. <laughs> Uh, for the Journal of American Newspaper. But uh, so, the, so the next thing was acting. Mm -hmm. uh, go go and perform. Went there uh, to the dramatic workshop and be, uh, got a scholarship there and uh, stayed there for a couple of years until they told me to get out and go to work. Didn't feel I was ready enough. Went to another acting school, studied there. And then the great Josh Logan, uh, Joshua Logan, the great uh, director, he was teaching a class up there and then he sent me out for my first audition and wow. i got a, I got a job went to three penny opera mm. from, from uh doing the the original uh, uh original three penny opera and and uh, went into that show mm -hmm. in 1959 that's a wow. long time ago but that's how that's how it, it inspired me but but what it, what's important to me in terms of acting is the communication yes the it's an opportunity to inform educate and of course entertain the audience but entertainment is really stardust what i mean by that is it it stardust it gets your attention it gets you interested but but you as a performer as, as an as a something you have something to say you have something to impart to to the audience that's watching and and i've always looked for something important to deal with Mm -hmm. uh, under those circumstances, you know, right. and uh, uh, I've, I've done that throughout my whole life, and uh, and, and it's it. This is what this is why uh, I, I act, why I yeah. perform, why yeah. I direct, why mm -hmm. I produce, why I write. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's to give it's to give something back to the audience and to organizations. You know, the military and the police department and the fire department is extremely important to me and should be important to every person because without those people we have no laws we have no country and we cannot exist without laws and we right. cannot exist you know and freedom as i say freedom is a privilege and should be respected and 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 the idea of of being free comes with consequences and responsibility you know and so I, I believe in all, all of the, the goodness of, of the military that it, that it was just, without them, we have nothing. Absolutely. That's how much, that's how much I believe. The, you know, the belief. video I did, uh, Just a Common Soldier, as you know, has been a video that I think you're going to show. Yes. Uh, if you have the time, 
Uh, yeah, oh yeah. It's, a, it's something that I did out of the, my heart. Uh, I did it for free, uh, produced, we helped producing it and, and uh, performed it. It received two Emmys yeah. and it has 30 million views, mm. 30 million. Mm. And that number is extraordinary because yeah. it's only about four years old and <laughs> it received two Emmys. Yeah. And the, the idea of, of 30 million views yeah. really is about 60, at least 60 million people. Yes, exactly. Because, you, you know, you don't right. you generally, if you, you watch it, you know, you watch, watch with somebody, somebody else, somebody else, or somebody right. else or, and sometimes four or five people. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, when you think about <clears throat> that, that many people, in, in the age range that would be watching it, it's extraordinary because it is. because you got you know, let's let's say maybe it's with a population of three hundred twenty seven million people, mm -hmm. you got uh, that in that age range, you know someone say from twenty five to seventy five, I don't know how many million people that is, but it's it's close it's it closer is. to uh, you know sixty million seventy maybe it's a hundred a hundred and something million of those yeah. people so. It's, it's, it's just fabulous. It's, um, I know so many, when we, after we watch that, we'll, I want to talk a little bit more about your uh, amazing, amazing career and some of the things that people will remember you from French connection and, and so much more. But, um, I know that this video and all that it encompasses and all of the warmth and the depth, and the beauty of it and the meaning of it. Uh, of all the things you've done, and you've done so many incredible things, Tony, this really is something that is tremendously near and dear to your heart, just a common soldier, isn't it? It is. It is very much so. You know, uh, uh, it is. It is something. <clears throat> it is something that I truly touches my heart, and something that I care about so very much, and uh, it, it's on the par with the. Uh, a view from the bridge, a play that yes. I that I did on Broadway that I've wanted to do for 40 years, mm -hmm. 35, 40 years, and and finally got it on on Broadway, and uh, and it, it, it it's something that I feel that I was born to play, and mm -hmm. this is this is a video, just a common soldier, uh, is something that uh, that well when you see it you'll understand. I, yeah. I think you, I know you've seen it, oh, but when yeah. the public when the public sees it. They'll understand when I'm talking about how how touching it is. Absolutely, I'll show that to everybody right now, and and they're going to just be, they're going to be amazed by this. Uh, Tony, we'll take a look at it right now, and <laughs> get ready, folks. It's very moving, and it's very beautiful. This is just a common soldier with the incomparable Tony Lobianco. <laughs> was getting old and paunchy, and his hair was falling fast. And he sat around the Legion telling stories of the past, of a war that he had fought in, and the deeds that he had done, in his exploits with his buddies. They were heroes, every one. And though sometimes to his neighbors his tales became a joke, all his legion buddies listened, for they knew whereof he spoke. But we'll hear his tales no longer, for old Bill has passed away. The world's a little poor, for a soldier died today. He will not be mourned by many, just his children and his wife. For he lived an ordinary and quite 
uneventful life. He held a job and raised a family, quietly going his own way. And the world won't note his passing. Though a soldier died today. When politicians leave this earth, their bodies lie in state. While thousands note their passing and proclaim that they were great, papers tell their whole life stories from the time that they were young. But the passing of a soldier goes unnoticed and unsung. Is the greatest contribution to the welfare of our land a guy who breaks his promise and cons his fellow man? Or the ordinary fellow, who in times of war and strife goes off to serve his country and offers up his life. A politician's stipend and the style in which he lives are sometimes disproportionate to the service that he gives, while the ordinary soldier, who has offered up his all, is paid off with a medal. Perhaps a pension, small. It's so easy to forget them, for it was so long ago that the old bills of our country went to battle. But we know it was not the politicians, with their compromises and ploys, who won for us the freedom that our country now enjoys. Should you find yourself in danger with your enemies at hand, would you want a politician with his ever-shifting stand, or would you prefer a soldier who has sworn to defend his home, his kin, and country, and would fight until the end? He was just a common soldier, and his ranks are growing thin. But his presence should remind us: we may need his life again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage. At the ending of his days, perhaps just a simple headline in the paper that would say, "Our country is in mourning for a soldier died today." That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing, Tony. You know that really does bring a, a tear to your eye because it's so true. Everything in that is so poignantly delivered and presented.、Um, what was it like when you were, you know, asked to to participate in something like that? That must have been extraordinary for you to be a part of that. Well.、Uh... <clears throat> It was given to my brother、uh, by a cousin, and uh, uh, for me to see what I wanted to do with it. And I had been—I was touched by it. Actually, I am touched by it every time I see it. Absolutely. Every time I see this thing, it brings、yeah. a well to my eyes.、Um, and so I—I I would do it and learn it and, and took an edge. Do it in front of friends and people, and then one, Stephen Klaus, a very good friend of of mine, said, "Hey, Tony, why don't we just film it?" So I called the author,、uh, his son, 
and asked him if we could do it and we weren't going to get paid nobody was going to get paid we were just doing it as a service for our country and for those that, that saved our world and he agreed and let us do it and now after all these uh, views that have done it, and and the awards that it has received you can't it, it just fills your heart it just fills your heart for doing something that you love something that you care about and something that you want to give to the people who, who who are watching this and those that have served and have given their all absolutely the the response as people we're talking 30 million views 60 million people have seen this which is extraordinary tony um what are some of the stories you remember what's some of the feedback that you have been receiving in all this time in those four years since you did that it must touch your heart as well because people probably are so moved by just a common soldier to have it presented in a way that really sums up the meaning of everything in such a poignant beautiful way they probably pour their heart out to you yeah jim you know i i, I met a, a veteran uh from World War II, a very highly de decorated man, 94 years old he was. And uh, and I just fell in love with him and, and he with me. And, and you know, I, I wanted to have this scene uh, and we arranged for it to be shown on Broadway, mm -hmm. right in the middle of Times Square on a big screen. Yeah and uh, right in the middle uh, on on memorial day and and we ha i had him come you see and speak to the audience in times square that had gathered around and i had some other dignitaries around as well in the back and and they spoke but what extraordinary thing happened there was an, a man about his age standing by and he said with an accent he said i would like to speak to that man in, in a french accent Mm -hmm. He thanked him for mm -hmm. saving his life and his country yeah. in Normandy. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that moment between yeah. these two 95-year-old people? It was extraordinary, and you, you, can't, you can't ask for more than that. Right. You know? And, right. and uh, uh, he, he was a dear friend, and his family is still friends of ours. And we, we see them and speak to them all the time. And, and uh, uh, he, in fact, it, we were going to surprise him on his birthday. Uh, and unfortunately, he started losing, losing it a little bit. And, and uh, uh, the day before he passed, mm. the day before his birthday, <coughs> excuse me, he passed. And I never did, I never did get to, to to say bye to say bye. Uh, but you know what was so beautiful he sent me a picture of him as a as a as a military young man i said i had sent him a picture signed and he sent me a picture signed to, to him as a, as a young military man and he kept that picture by by his bed hmm. and 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 it, it meant so much to him you know yeah. at the at the end when he was losing it he was saying to his son, Tony, Tony, he was calling his son by, by my name. Your name. He's calling. Uh, <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's easy to get choked up on that, of course. Yeah. Literally. Uh, that is amazing that he was calling out your name, huh? Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that uh, that come along with all of the brilliant work that you've done in your illustrious career, Tony, and all the lives you've touched through your body of work. And then you have a project like that come. And um, when you, um, when we spoke, uh, you and I and Elise on the phone, and we talked about, gee, when, when would be a good time to have you come on as my guest? Because I love chatting with you. Um, and you picked Memorial Day. And what a perfect day, because I know, you know, all of this is so near and dear to your heart. So thank you very much for, for selecting, you know, the show to share that, because um, that that means a lot to me, Tony, that you wanted to do that and you wanted to share. Well, you mean a lot to me, Jim. You've been, you've been a wonderful friend and a devoted 
uh, de devoted to charities, to, to organizations, everything that you do. You know, uh, we've been to many uh, events, as you showed in the beginning, together. And uh, they're always right there, Jim. They're always right there doing the right thing for the people. And that's what's important, communicating with the people and, and caring and helping organizations and charities and so on. That's what we do. That's right. what it's all about. That's Absolutely. What that's what it's all about. And and speaking of that, I want to go back to a, go down a little trip down uh, memory lane here. And the very first time that we met was, as I mentioned in the introduction, when I was uh, sort of commissioned to uh, interview you on PBS. And this was in the studio and that was a fantastic night. And the response from the viewers in the audience was tremendous. And this was when we were filming in the studio and doing the interviews for the Italian Americans, which ran nationally on PBS. And that was a great night. Remember that night at the studio of PBS? I do. I do very, very much, very much. And yeah. uh, you, you, obviously, when I'm looking, looking at that picture, that was when I was much, much older and fatter. <laughs> 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 never, never in a never in a million years, Tony. Uh, uh, this 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 is such a great shot too. Of course, there we're looking. You know, we're looking at the uh, the French Connection. What was it like being involved in that movie? Of course, so we're talking about the the legendary Sonny Grasso's influence as well. What was that experience like? Well, I think that, you know, we were such friends. Everybody was such friends with each other. Uh, you know, Roy Scheider, I'd worked with for five different projects. Uh, Sonny, I've known for a number of years. I hung out with him, uh, went on police uh, calls with him, uh, uh, and Randy Jerkinson, uh, who, was, who was Sonny's partner at one time, and Eddie, Eddie Egan, and uh, everybody got along very well. I I, uh, I, I couldn't be, couldn't have been happy happier uh, working on that product. It was it was just fun. Mm -hmm. you know, we had great times, and also you know later on you know Jason Miller. Uh, the actor uh, who wrote the, uh, I mean, who acted in uh, in the, the Exorcist. Oh yeah. Also wrote that championship season. Mm -hmm. They were all dear friends. Uh, when they did were doing the Exorcist, you know, we'd have these. Uh, we'd, we'd send each other uh, like wreaths and and kid each other, and then we'd play basketball against each other at night before the you know before the next day shooting, and it was just great, uh, great fun. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, producer Phil D'Antoni, who, who was a great producer, produced Bullet, mm -hmm. The French Connection, and Seven Ups. Seven and Ups. Had, uh, seven Ups, and both of them I, I, I was in. Uh, but the same stuntman uh, did all, all, those chase, all those chase scenes. And, and, and that movie really revolutionized movies. You know? There's the Seven Ups right there. Here's no, the no, that's blood, that's blood Brothers. Oh, that's right. That's Blood Brothers. Yes, that's right. That's, that's uh, Blood Brothers. Also, you know, Richard Gere, really and... Richard Gere's first movie, actually. Uh, Richard Gere, that's right. Yeah, I'm, myself with my mustache and my curly hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right, exactly. Yeah, that, that that was cool. a very powerful movie that I recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a movie that, uh, how, how things happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, Richard Price, the writer, lived in. The, we lived in the same building, and he was writing this 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 book, and then then asked, uh, uh, you know, for me to read the book, uh, the book, and then the script. Mm -hmm. and Robert Mulligan, the great Robert Mulligan director, uh, I was the first actor he interviewed, and I knew a great deal about the this part, uh, mm -hmm. having read it and studied it, and, and so I was the first actor that he that he talked to, and then he hired me right away, and then. He asked me who I want as my brother, who I wanted as my son, so on and so forth. But just mm -hmm. great. It was just, mm -hmm. just we really got along fabulously. Oh, absolutely. And I think this one, this is uh, Seven Ups, right? This seven year? Ups with Roy. With Roy seven Ups. Ups. Yeah. yeah. Seven Ups. Yeah. Yeah. This was this was another one of those family films with, with Sonny Grasso and Phil D'Antoni, the producer. Now he directed this this movie as well, and uh, and with Roy again, of course. Uh, so Richard Lynch uh, was, was also in it. And, and when I ran a uh, theater called the Triangle Theater, Richard Lynch helped me, helped me with ha hammer and nail to, to build the stage. And, uh, and uh, so every, and, and Roy was one of my actors. Roy, Roy acted in a Jason Miller play. 
And when, when Roy had to go do so, something in the film with Jane Fonda, uh, Jason Miller jumped into his own play and played the lead. So, I mean, it's all, it was all just, you know, the, the way you, the way you, you do things then uh, is just a beautiful thing. You know, something we really, really uh, loved each other and, and we were interested in the art. We were interested in the work. You That's know, right. we didn't care that we were getting paid. The theater was free. Nobody right. got paid in the theater. Nobody paid to come to the theater. Right. We let, it, we let the audience come free and <clears throat> let them, if they loved what they saw, they would donate. Mm -hmm. Which they did. Kept the theater running forever, ever, forever, for a long time uh, on donations. In fact, when I was asked by a very good friend of mine, another uh, Stephen Chinlow, another priest, he said, would you like to have a theater in this church? I said, sure. I said, and so we we borrowed five thousand dollars from the from the church wow. and and paid it back through donations. And we did plays that were relevant to what he was going to preach about. Mm. So we'd pick a play and it had a message in it. And then on the Sunday, he'd, he'd talk about it to his parishioners and say, right. now go see it, act it out. Mm -hmm. And they would come, they would come to the theater. So it was organic. Right. It was a beautiful, beautiful relationship with the people. And what we, well, so we did was in the neighborhood, we'd go, if we needed props, we needed this, that, we'd go to a store. We'd say, mm -hmm. here's 10 tickets or five tickets. Uh, we need that, that bed. We need that couch. We need that. And so we put it all together. This was in the 60s, 63, right. 64, something, something, something like that. And that's the way we put the theater on. And we had Joe Alisi as our costume designer. It was a big costume designer now. Uh, we had, of course, Roy Scheider, Jason Miller. We had all these people. We did all of Jason Miller's plays mm. before that championship season. We had a great deal of, of, of talent and, and Jules Fisher, the great lighting oh, yeah. in Broadway. He he did our lighting our lighting in our theater. So it was really organic and, and from great people and friends. Friends. We all had the same that's, you know, love for what for what we care about, you know. That's, and it's people and re relationships. That's what it's all about. Speaking of which, Sonny Grasso says, Tony. <laughs> Sonny Grasso, the, yeah. the, 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 the son of Junior. the son of Sonny Grasso, my dear yeah. dear best friend. God yeah. God rest his soul. He's a, he's a beauty. He's a real beauty, and uh, and he put so many people together. Sonny mm -hmm. Grasso. Yeah. They, he had a natural. Sonny Sonny Grasso Senior was a natural born leader. Yes. And and he he could just put people together. He was a great. I don't, I don't, he did it almost through osmosis. Yeah. And he, he just through his own strength of personality, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, he, as, a, as a first grade detective uh, with, uh, with Eddie Egan, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, they had the record of arrests. They had the record of, of especially the French Connection drugs with the biggest bust ever. Right. You know? And right. Uh, so, you know, it was a hell of a time, a wonderful oh, time. Yeah. To, oh, yeah. to to be in and, and to have all these great people and and it still goes on that's you know, right we i'm surrounded by dear dear friends who i love who are who are of the same ilk right who, who want to do for people like yourself yeah. who yeah, want right. to don't to you know give of themselves for the goodness of the human race and right. that's that's what is important and forget about i mean these politics politicians the partisan see what is going on and 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 appreciate it don't be afraid to applaud someone who has accomplished something right. don't worry about you know your party getting elected or this party getting elected let's do the right thing right. let's be reasonable let's be understanding of, mm -hmm. of what's happening exactly. you know we're not a we're not a third world company a country country right we don't we don't after an election we don't try to, to overthrow a government or, or create a coup, you know? We're not supposed to be doing that. We've always accepted in the past 44 presidents that we've had, we've never had someone that we're trying to get out of office. Look at what, look at what has been accomplished, you know? And, you know, I'm not, I'm not even political. I'm not even talking politics. I'm, I'm just talking facts. Right. And, and just be fair, just doing, be fair. That's doing what's right for the greater good of all of us. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, Bar absolutely. Barbara uh, Barbara Milton says, I agree so much about fighting off the isms and never forgetting about what our brave soldiers have fought for since the founding of the nation. And uh, we've got some really, really nice comments coming in here. Amen, Tony from Valerie Landis. We must never forget and thank you for all that you do and you remind us. Uh, Victoria Sampson, wonderful person who I know personally as well, two true gentlemen. Do you think she's talking about us, Tony? <laughs> we hope so, right? <laughs> Christopher Joseph says, Robert Andrew Joseph, 11-10-24 uh, to 3-15-2020, uh, World War II. Uh, his father was a pilot. That's wonderful to see as well. Let's see. Martha Oliver Swartz here says, Frank Hall, uh, he was in the Air Force, 11-15-59 to 2002, buried National Cemetery, Kentucky, Fiance. Uh, Sonny says, beautiful job, Tony. God bless. Ken, who's in Wappingers Falls, New York, says, coming from a military family, I love this. And I thank you, sir. Uh, so a lot of love coming in here. Sonny, once again, says, uh, bravo. Um, oh, the lovely Dina Martin. Dina. Another wonderful friend of ours, the lovely uh, Dina Martin. She's uh, a great friend of ours, yeah. Isn't she? For those watching, this is the beautiful Dina Martin, who is the daughter of the legendary Dean Martin, and she's yes. watching right now. We love uh, we love Dina well, and John. Dina John. and John Griffith, oh, they yeah. they're our dearest friends. Yes. We speak to them every day. Yes, today. yeah. They're, they're, they're the beauties, and, and she's a wonderful performer. Isn't and she? Great, you know, she's really a, a lovely lovely person and yeah. john john is very very fortunate to have her as his wife as yes. i am to have my beautiful elise, elise. And that's I, right and you, and if you think you're having we're having a good uh, interview here wait till you get elise on the on on this yeah. show you will see how how smart and wonderful well, I, she is. i you know? said i said do you want to join she says no this this will be tony's day and i'll come on next after <laughs> but uh yeah. and you know what i love about dina too she has this spot on brilliant dry wit she's as funny as heck john is too <laughs> they both are very very funny i mean super talents but tremendously funny as well really really beautiful people and all friends of ours hello to dina and john thanks for joining us we love that so, sunny says wow and just <laughs> we've got some uh, beautiful job narrating and uh there's another name here sunny says bill hickman Ah, uh, uh, Bill Hickman, our stuntman. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he did all the driving. Richie Lynch. And uh, hi, Jim and Tony. Wonderful interview. I was so looking forward to this. Kathleen lives in Queens, New York. She's a sweetheart of a person. She works for a company that works for the New York Mets. So oh, we go, good. We, we, we go check out uh, we're Mets fans because we, uh, mm -hmm. dad, always a Brooklyn Dodger fan through and through. Uh, Sonny loved you, Tony, of course. Um, Karen Levitt, who lives in New Hampshire. Tony, thank you for your heartfelt sharing. You understand we need to come together. We are strong, resilient people. Courage, selfless duty, giving us our freedoms. Very, very much so, I agree. Uh, Victoria says, thank you, Jim and Tony. Karen says, my dad, B29, WW1, uh, POW, Korea, decorated veteran, a great generation. They love life, family, and this country. Very beautiful. And uh, Austin Greenville says, Tony, you are so right. Kindness before politics, uh, all very, very important uh, that we're talking about here. Thanks for all these great comments. There's so many more coming in. Just want to go over a little bit more about, uh, here's another great shot, Tony. Remember this one here? Oh, this is from uh, Kill the Irishman. Mm. <laughs> that was a yeah. good movie. Very yeah. good movie. That was uh, didn't get the play it deserves, but it's a good movie. Kill the mm. Irishman. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Again, you, you, your range is extraordinary. Even here in this uh, the movie uh, with the Angelian story. The Angelian story. Yeah. That was that was. She's a lovely lady, and so is uh, uh, and her husband is my one of my dear friends, dear dear friends, and. And she's just a she's just a sweetheart and, and a great heart. Yeah. And talk about giving back as well. She is she is just that. Here's another one. Look at that, oh, the dapper from, Tony. This is from Fist with yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was Sylvester Stallone, Rod Steiger, uh, you name it. It was in that movie. It was, mm -hmm. it was a terrific movie. Mm -hmm. And that another one. is. Is that, that is that a police story, maybe? 
Uh, could be, could be yeah. police story. Yeah. Yeah. Police story. And look at this one. Ah, uh, that was Goldenrod. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now actually I'm on a horse farm in Maryland. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there, there I am. You know, so, there so, I am so. as, as a rodeo rider in that, in that movie. And that was a, that's a really good movie. Yeah. And I, I recommend that for, uh, uh, well, everybody, but mm -hmm. mainly for, for, for younger, younger people should see that. You should, ah. Look at that guy, Marciano. Mm -hmm. This was this was this was a, a one of my heroes, of course. Uh, Marci growing up, uh, Marciano after Joe Louis, uh, uh, Marciano was was it was our champ, and, right? Uh, of course, being undefeated, uh, you know, forty nine wins in a row, and the only undefeated heavyweight champ of the world. Uh, and then I get to play him. It's Unbelievable! A Can you imagine to be able what, to? Uh, I mean, what what fantastic stuff that is! I mean, you you can't make that up. You grow up with these you grow up with these people, and 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 then all of a sudden you get to p play him. It's like a view from the bridge, a view yeah. from the bridge. When I was in acting school at, at at eighteen years old, right after high school, Arthur Miller came to our acting school, and he brought a scene from a view from the bridge, a couple of kids did the scene in front of, in front of the, our, our, our group. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that scene, I didn't know the play. I looked at that scene, but I heard what was being said. And I said, I'm gonna do that play on Broadway one day. Mm -hmm. And 28, 29 years later, I did the play on Broadway with Arthur Miller. And he and I <clears throat> walking down the street, looking up at the marquee, with both our names over the title. And I said to him, look at that, Arthur. That's not bad for two kids from Brooklyn. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Hey, look, Karen nominates Tony for office. Hmm. Uh, well, well, he, <laughs> it was a time actually, if I uh, dig this one up here, uh, where he was in office. <laughs> The mayor, LaGuardia, the little yeah. flower. Tell us about that. That that has had various incarnations over the years, but yes. you were so amazing. And I remember the night that I was there with a group of dear friends. Uh, we were all together, and uh, Connie Stevens was there, and Mario and Matilda Cuomo were there that night as well. What was it like? taking on that role writing producing directing starring in it you were so impeccable in that role tony thank you so much i, I you know uh the original writer was paul shire and uh patricia snyder uh was the producer and we did it at the egg in albany the theater called the egg uh and uh we did it there for pbs mm -hmm. and we fill we had a run and uh then we filmed it for pbs with ed koch was, oh, was yeah. the mayor at the time a big fan of uh, laguardia's mm -hmm. uh he narrated it they they cut it up and he narrated it it won five emmys it won five emmys this 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 uh, show and then years a couple years later and then we took it around here and there and then we did it on broadway in 89 and it, it wasn't so successful uh, I had broken my foot uh, in previews. Mm. <laughs> I, had de I devised <laughs> previews. a wonderful uh, entrance for myself, which was sliding down a fire pole <laughs> in, in, the, in the Broadway theater. And it was a marvelous entrance where I, because uh, LaGuardia was a, like a fire bug. He loved going to fires. Anytime there was a fire, he, he would go with the fire department. And and so in this, in this, uh, 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 in this show, I put on a fire hat, a cap, a cape, and so on and so forth. And at the top of the pole uh, is where the light was supposed to come on and take me up there. And I'm, I'm supposed to say, boy, what a fire, and slide mm -hmm. down the pole. Well, the light didn't come on, but the light on the bottom was on. So right. Stupid me. I said, oh, I got to get to the light. And so I let go of the pole. I didn't slide down properly. My legs crossed and came crashing down oh. and broke my foot. Uh, I did, of course, that wouldn't doesn't stop an actor. No. He does, I do the whole show. You keep going. An hour and a half with the foot. And uh, 
then after the show, they went to the hospital, they put a, a boot on my foot, and I wanted to do the show the next day, and they said, no, no, you can't do it the next day, so I gave them one day, and then I did the rest of the show, that was in previews, mm -hmm. with a big clumpy boot on my <laughs> foot, and uh, so anyway, but you know, later, I, uh, Paul had passed away, Paul Shy as a writer, passed right. away, and he said, Tony, take over, do what you want to do, so I optioned the play, and then rewrote it, and owned it, and rewrote it, rewrote it, and now, um, I, 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 I'm like a fanatic with it because mm. I'm, yeah. I, I keep working at it yeah. and, and uh, it's, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it published. Uh, and, and, uh, I, I just, just love doing that play. You know? Absolutely. Because again, it's all information and history yeah. that right. we should learn from. Yeah. But your, your, the mannerisms and, uh, just the way that you presented it, uh, the movements, the voice, the, the expressions, you really took on that role, yet you, I'm sure you blended it with elements of who Tony Lobianco is as well, right? Yes, well, I, I, you know, the way LaGuardia spoke, had I, had I done exactly as he spoke, it would have taken forever. Yeah, because, sure. Because, you know, back in, the, in that period of time, he would say, well, Right. You know, what we do has to be done. And, and, and they had right. that kind yeah. of that yeah. kind of cadence yeah. back in back in his time, 1934 to 1945. Very, very animated, animated yeah. and so, dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the so you take a piece of it and you, you, you fix it. And because I, I wanted to get so much information, the man, you know, the man was a was a congressman for seven terms. Yeah. Before. He became That's mayor. He became the mayor he, of New York. He was mayor right? for twelve years, you know, and and uh, so there had, there's a lot in that he that he did before he became mayor, right? And uh, and you can't imagine what you heard. You were at the place what he accomplished in his not only his twelve years, but you know, as soon as he became congressman, he volunteered to go in World War One and become an air pilot, and 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 within one year he became a major. Mm. after he left then he went back to congress mm. it was amazing it was an amazing yeah. human being he really was that's, yeah that's you know those people back then and back with the soldiers the memorial day soldiers those those were special they weren't the greatest generation for nothing right they they were they were people mm. who worked people who who worked with their hands work with their their body communicated mm. they had they had family values they had people values they were accomplished you know history is a great great teacher right and we we we, so we seem to forget it we seem mm -hmm. to forget all that they've that, that history has been teaching us you know that's right absolutely here's yeah. another one here that uh, bring back maybe a memory or two there well that's that right there you go yeah. that is that's a, that's incredible yeah the little flower there's for the folks that uh didn't get a chance to see it and hopefully will at some point uh mm -hmm. but this one here it's uh alec, a young alec, alec baldwin right alec baldwin uh, yeah this is the jura yes uh, well, a great movie with with demi moore as well mm -hmm. and, and she she's quite lovely in this and and, and wonderful actress in this film it's a very good movie this movie. i really rec recommend mm -hmm. this movie called Absolutely. the jura mm -hmm. yeah and then this one i think uh this involved the wedding didn't it <laughs> what is this you see oh, connie stevens yeah, and connie yeah stevens is there. Mm -hmm. what is this i think it's what uh there was uh, one where it was a wedding right and you were were you an in-law or huh. <sighs> yeah it wasn't a play no I, no it wasn't a play or a movie that i did yeah, I yeah. Never worked with Connie in a movie. Right, right. Anybody, anybody else in there that I can remember? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful shot of the whole group. And who's this dapper gentleman here? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that was from. Uh, oh my! Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, I forget. I forget. Yeah. yeah. It was a, it was a weekly show? Oh, that you did. Yeah. And then who is this lovely lady? There's my go. beautiful. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you get her on, she's, she's yeah. going to wow you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, she, beauty, but, but, uh, you know, she's a very spiritual. She is young lady. And yeah. she's written a book, uh, that, uh, where she'll tell you all about it. Yes. And yeah. The visitations that she's Absolutely. had. Yeah. Yeah, and she, and she does these wonderful, beautiful uh, pieces on Facebook that we follow, and uh, a really beautiful person. And this again was another one of those shots yeah. where we were and, at. And, and you can go back what? to that shot. It was also uh, the USO. You see that? Yes, That's right. We, we were doing something for us for our military. Again, we're always, uh, you know, you know, I had the honor of presenting a wreath on the, the tomb of the unknown soldier. Can you imagine? Did you really? I had the honor of, of presenting the wreath. It's a special, uh, and, and Elaine Rogers arranged that from the USO in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's fantastic. That That's quite an honor, too, to be able to have yeah. something like that occur. And then again, we were going over some of the various events that uh, yeah. you and I have been to. That was the night of the uh, the Little Flower, which was, I mean, it was a packed house. And we're on stage here at another event. And of course, I mentioned uh, he's watching too, Sal at wonderful Sal Patsy's. Sal. It's, Patsy's, I've uh, been going there for years when his, when his dad was running the place too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, when you look at this amazing career and all these lives that you've touched, Tony, um, what are some of the, I mean, you could spend hours probably reflecting on it all, but what are some of the things that are some of the greatest blessing and joys that have developed as a result of all this effort of, of, of continuing on with the show when you have a boot on your foot and you still got to go on stage, you still got to do your thing. Uh, all these different incredible roles you've played on television, in film, on stage, and off all of that as well, just in life. What are some of the things when you look back at it that give you the greatest joy in this incredible career that still continues? Well, you know, the idea of meeting so many fabulous people, you know, uh, I had the honor, you know, people that you've admired and, and grew up with on and so on, like Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Having a, having dinner with Frank Sinatra, uh, just one-on-one -on -one and, 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 and having that kind of relationship that was, we, we, we was, I mean, when someone who, that's your, that's your, your idol and, and, and that you respect so much. And then he comes in and he's a fan of yours. I mean, you can't make that up. You know, he, he's a, he's a guy who's watched all your movies and you sit down with him and he, and he says to me, he's, you know, he, he says to me, when are you and I going to work together? Mm -hmm. when you can show them something they've never seen before. Frank Sinatra mm -hmm. said that, you know, uh, to me. I, you know, you, it's astounding. It's astounding to me. And the, and the idea of, of uh, meeting all these magnificent people and working, working with them, Sonny, Sonny Grasso, yeah. uh, legend, Sonny. Phenomenal. Uh, you know, the directors, you know, and working with Zeffirelli on Jesus of Nazareth. One of the great movies of all time, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, with with uh, Steiger and and, uh, and 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 the young man who played Jesus, Powell, unbelievable. Yeah, that movie, yeah. uh, Zeffirelli is the greatest artist. You, yes, you, you can't make it up. He's just, uh, you know, so particular, so so fine. Everything yeah. was 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 exact. Spot on, yeah, you know? yeah, exacting. Dina, uh, great job, Jim. D love Dina Martin. Dina here. We love you too, G Dina. Mm -hmm. Got to get you on the show. It'd be wonderful to have her as a guest on the show as well. Uh, everybody's nominating Tony for uh, for office. Uh, Sonny <laughs> says, uh, what about my arm, my arm? Oh, uh, Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. <laughs> With Hal Linden and myself. And, and uh, that was a, a, another, uh, we, we had a situation where we're doing a television pilot series and uh, I was uh, the t detective, and, and uh, so was Hal. And on one of the uh, the cases, which was like the Harlem the Har Harlem Mosque incident yeah. that happened up there, yeah. uh, my character they had me lose an arm. Mm. So when I wake up in the hospital, and it was it was in the hospital that uh, we, we shot it in a real hospital, and so when I wake up and I see that I have no arm, I scream out. 
my arm, my arm, you mm. know, and everybody comes, all the doctors and nurses come running in saying, no, no, you can't say that. You can't power that in the hospital. You know? uh, you know, it was That's just funny. great. And Dina Martin says, ask Tony, don't be a shy nurse. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, uh, we were at the house and, you know, we were doing a Tony Lovianco festival and mm -hmm. Dina hadn't seen some of the films. And the first film I ever did was The Honeymoon Killers. Yes. With, uh, so that's where that line comes from. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful movie. That's a low budget picture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so real. And uh, it's a true story, which mm -hmm. I love doing. And uh, Shirley Stoller was uh, played opposite my, myself. And it was a true story about, about Martha Beck and Raymond Fernandez. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in, that, in that movie, the line, <laughs> uh, don't be a shy nurse, is one of our jokes, inside jokes. So you, gotta, you have to go see the movie to appreciate where that line comes from. You're right. Many moon killers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dina. I love yes. you. We, we we love you, Dina and John and the, and the whole gang and and Sonny. Um, so, is there anything you know your illustrious career? Uh, you've touched about pretty much all of the arts that one can really touch upon. Is there anything that is still on the Tony Lobianco bucket list of all the people you've worked with and all the extraordinary uh, just productions and projects and so much that you've had an opportunity to be a part of Tony. Is there anything that's still out there that you, you got to do, you want to do that's, that's sort of burning and yearning inside you, Tony? Uh, you know, I don't think I'm capable of, of fulfilling this one dream. I know that I would, I'd love, there was a particular scene that I know I could accomplish, but I don't know if I accomplished the whole play. King Lear. Wow. Yeah. It's the scene that is the scene of, uh, of, of when his, when his daughter dies and it's that famous scene when he's carrying her, that scene I've always wanted to do. And I've, I've, I studied it quite clearly. I don't know if I can do the whole play, but I, one of these days I'm going to do that scene. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, it's those kinds of things that, that stick in your head, you know, mm -hmm. and I would love to be able to do the whole thing. I saw, actually, I saw Austin Wells oh, uh. do, do King Lear. What mm. happened was he broke his foot. Oh, how about that? And, <laughs> and, and, and he was in a wheelchair just before, just before opening on, on Broadway. Mm -hmm. and, and he devised his entrance in the beginning big map they were talking the other, other people on stage with this big map and he is entrance he makes a ramp it comes right through the right through the map on a wheelchair <laughs> leave it Imagine all well to develop an entrance i love it <laughs> talk about an entrance huh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know one of the other things too you know when you have such a long career and one that again um it's such a beautiful career. Everything you've done, you've done it the right way. I mean, you you had so many wonderful opportunities come your way and you seized them and made the best of them. And when people look at your body of work, um, not only is it extraordinary, but also it, the decisions you've made are so spot on for the characters you've taken on and absorbed. Um, when you have a career that's uh, you know extensive like this, then you have the opportunities to to mentor others and sort of pass it on to others what you've learned. Do you have that opportunity uh, as days continue to to mentor those coming up the ranks in acting and more? I would yes, I would like I would I I did teach. Uh, as a matter of fact, how odd life is. When I left that first acting school. That I, that I I mentioned before, I went to the other acting school, the, act, the Actors Repertory Theater, it was called. And I was there for the first year. And the head of the school came to me and said, I want you to teach. I said, teach? I'm a student here. I'm 20, 20 years old, 21 years old. I said, you can't really teach. Uh, I mean, I, you have to be sensitive to these. There's a bunch of young kids coming in to the school. And you have to just have a certain sensitivity. 
He said, you see, you know that. Mm -hmm. That's why you can teach. So right. I taught for a year. I taught Mama Cass from from the from the mother. Oh yeah, the yeah. She was she was wanted to be an actress as well. And wow. and Frankie Lyman, remember Frankie Lyman? Oh sure. Was, uh, yeah, and yeah. There were there were a couple of students that. Uh, but I only I taught for a year and then went on and but I taught recently for one year, uh, but two two three years ago I think it was, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed that tremendously. And yeah, I, I would yeah. like to do it again. I, do, I, I yeah. would very much like to do it again. I, I taught some private classes as well. Yeah. So, so I, we, uh, Dan Goggin, who is an award-winning playwright, composer, performer, he created the legendary, long-lasting uh, Broadway hit, Nonsense. I interviewed mm. him a couple of nights ago here on the Gym Master Show Live, and he says, perfect Memorial Day show. Congratulations to you both. So he is uh, watching and sending his love as well. And Sonny Grosso says, much love to Tony and Elise. Rayo, looks like we're heading to Rayo's. Rayo soon. So uh, that would be really nice. And uh, Sonny also says, by the way, Tony, loved all your LNO guest appearances. Each one was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sonny. But of course, you know, with all of this, the love of Finley. Um, you know, you Absolutely. have three daughters and a beautiful wife. <clears throat> and you're there. Um, what, what is a typical day like for you? I mean, right now, there's not been anything typical. Everything's been atypical, you know, as we deal with this un pandemic situation. I mean, I'll tell you right now what, what I'm doing here in, under these circumstances and loving every minute of it. Believe me, I've, I'm using this time uh, when the weather is beautiful as it's turning out to be now. I'm out there swinging a pick <laughs> out in the garden and, yes. and in, the, in the park. I've made a whole park. It's about two acres. Mm. I mean, I've cut, I've cut down the, the trees yeah. and bushes yeah. and, and so on and so forth. And each day I'm out there six, seven, eight hours a day, or maybe not eight, but six or seven for sure. Uh, and I'm clearing the play and clearing it away. And, and uh, you know, I found a fox, a foxhole. And now, you know, it's fabulous. I've been, you know, you, there's holes all over the, all over the property. These oh, guys, yeah. They, they dig in and so they get in holes. <laughs> and so we, so now this, this hole, I didn't know what it was there, whether it's a, mo, a groundhog or a, whatever. so I'm, I'm filling in the hole so the horses don't trip and break their foot or, or so on. So people can walk in this park that I'm making. Yeah. Well, it, so I, I packed this hole. Well, this, whoever it was could, he takes it out, cleans it out again. So I, I what the heck is so I pack it again. He cleans it out again. I mean, he, I'm, and I'm packing books and, and all sorts of things. This guy's cleaning it out. So now I fall in love with the guy, whoever it is. You know, I, I, I admire See? his his ability. So now I feed him. Right. And I find out I got a camera, and we put a camera into Fox. It's a beautiful fox a tail. See? And so now I'm feeding, I bring, I feed him dog food every day, dog food and then the water uh, out there each day. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and we taking care him. of He's taking care of the fox because I admire his, his fortitude. And his tenacity <laughs> and resilience. Exactly. And he's, he's, resilience. Uh, he, he, exactly. <laughs> and he's very lucky that you are the good hearted man that you are tony because probably after all of that with the twigs and boulders and rocks mm. the next step probably would have been cement right <laughs> yes exactly exactly that would have been that. <laughs> but so because i we, so we bought a camera because i didn't know if it was a groundhog you yeah. know they're not so good you know right. they make so i figured we better get a camera and see what it is yeah so i said i hope it's a fox yeah, and not, and not a ground out because the ground we got to put them in a cage and take mm -hmm. them somewhere and you know get rid of them because right. they can't make. But it's a fox, so now the fox is might become my buddy. And That's so it. I, you know. <laughs> so are you planting vegetables and flowers, oh growing God. tomatoes? I mean, and... See, my, I'm a cook as well. Yeah. You know, yes, chef, right. And we and my wife as well. She, mm -hmm. She's a vegan and she's a terrific cook. And I'm I'm an Italian, so I. <laughs> so that's I, I, it. I, food, I, period, I, right? Mm -hmm. But I also, in my garden, I have a fifty by fifty foot by a hundred foot garden, mm. a, a huge, and I plant a hundred tomato plants, San Marzano tomatoes. Oh yeah. In this garden, and we make our sauce. A good one. Each ones. year, 
our own our own organic sauce you see and also corn and whatever else you can imagine in there uh, uh, beets and whatever lettuce and what have you mm -hmm. so we keep we keep uh, enjoying enjoying it each year i i got myself a little greenhouse mm -hmm. and uh, things are growing in there which is nice and so when i, I mean I, I, but i i love each day each day you know i'm not going to get defeated right no i don't get defeated no no, right. no keep you going. Know, i don't allow things to anything that no. is going to uh shorten my happiness in life and my joy in life well, i don't care what it is i mean i i've uh, i've overcome a great deal in my life yeah. including losing my daughter my youngest daughter 30 right. 33 years old for cancer right. yeah she passed my right. nephew just passed yesterday it was just yesterday and right. i just cannot i cannot let it uh, defeat me I, I will overcome and, and, and because we have, we have, they, they wouldn't want me to, no. to be unhappy no. or get no. defeated. No, no. You see, and uh, I will not. For where? And for mine. Absolutely, Tony. Absolutely. Um, where does that fortitude, that resilience, that can do that i will do we will get through this together we will you know because i tend to be like that too in ways that yeah. uh you I'll know you, what, where does that where come I, from i tell you where it comes from <clears throat> being born in brooklyn is one yeah. of is one of the elements and what i mean by that is for, you know if you're an east coast brooklyn new york kind of a person you're used to everything everything that's coming at you you're used to you know, you, you, you see different cultures, different people, different events, we, uh, traffic, different yeah. weather. It's yeah. different than California. We have, we have the four seasons. We, we have all this stuff going on. It's all history and education, but mainly right. my mother and my father. Mm. And their love and encouragement for us, my two brothers, John and Joseph, uh, they, they, they're the, the standard bearers for our love. Mm. And, and my 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 relationship with both my brothers is uh, legend, I yeah. would say, to, yeah. to all the people that know us. Uh, my beautiful older brother is only 17 months older than I, passed away from, from cancer. Uh, but th that is a great tragedy again, because he's a beauty. He was mm. great. And, and our bond was he was my best critic, too. Yeah, he, he saw he knew me. He knew me very well and always and always had the, 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 the you know he was like magnifying glass yeah yeah you know and and yeah. working as finely as i like to work on things you know getting getting as close to we we'll never achieve perfection but you mm. know the the idea mm. is to yeah. try right. to, uh, to be, get it perfect you know what i've learned tony uh, yeah. uh with people that i've interviewed over the years and and i think i have calculated through my work on television radio i've interviewed maybe about six thousand people which i can't believe when i look at it all um what i learned to do myself even in my craft uh even to do some, even doing something like this you know because as you know i do this work professionally in real tv studios this is the home studio but in real tv studios real stage real radio so even with this, the amount of effort and time just to put something like this together, extraordinary. But what I did, what I learned to do is take the word um, striving for perfection. Mm -hmm. And I have found by changing that to striving for excellence, it's similar, but it doesn't have all of those constraints of perfection because perfection doesn't necessarily exist yet excellence can uh -huh. okay yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely uh you know the laguardia i've been going over that since 1983 i yeah. think we I first did it and i'm still working on it still working still on fixing it fixing it i'm still i'm and i'm still inspired to do it i'm inspired by it I, it's re remarkable Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful coming uh, comments coming in here. Strong will, big hearts, lots of love and faith. Uh, sorry for the losses uh, as well. Your parents, you mentioned your parents being great inspirations. What, what were their names? Carmelo 
and Sally. Did they come straight over from Italy and land no, in New York? No, they were born here. They were born, they were born, born in here. My, my, my grandparents were born in in. They Sicily. came over. Yeah. Uh, but you know, my, my father was like another brother. Yeah, yeah. He was like another brother to us, uh, three sons. And, and he, he drove a taxi cab. And, and uh, when he, he would come home, you could hear him say, where's my boys? Mm. Where's my boys? Yeah. Coming up those stairs, you know, to yeah. work, drive a cab 12 hours as, as a cab driver. And then Tough work. Come home. And, and I never remember one day in my life that I didn't hug and kiss my father. Mm. Right. You know? Right. That, and it's, I know that's rare, a rare thing to, to, to say, but, but that's, that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, that's what it was. And, yeah. and, uh, yeah, you know, I'm Beautiful. so, I'm so grateful for that. And all of that love and support, uh, and adulation and admiration contributed to the Tony Lobianco, the Anthony Lobianco, Tony Lobianco that you are today. You know, we've been talking a little bit, touching, briefly upon what we've all been going through with mm. this pandemic situation, which is, it's been extraordinary in so many different ways. Um, I have said to people when I've uh, chatted with them in interviews and, and just in regular conversation with family and friends and colleagues, this seems to be also, in addition to everything that it's been from a, a health situation and an economic situation and the amount of loss in all different areas, there's also, a reset that's happening. There is opportunity. There is opportunity to be entrepreneurial, to be innovative, creative, to collaborate, but also to take this time where the entire world is pretty much stopped collectively at the same time and maybe go back to some of the things you and I have been talking about. More empathy, more respect, more kindness, uh, less divisiveness, bringing people together. We have this unique opportunity similar almost to the Great Depression, where everything's been equalized in certain ways, where everything just came to a halt um, at the same time concurrently. And there is this, we're talking about social distancing now that we're doing, but to me, it seems like we were social distancing before we had to social distance. We had our heads in our cell phones, there you go. stuck watching what everybody was doing on social media, road rage people were complaining not enough kindness empathy nobody says please welcome or thank you or my pleasure anymore and now that we've had all of this happen this is a beautiful time through all of the tragedy and the horrific nature of it all to maybe rise from these ashes in a more mm. meaningful deeper beautiful connected way do you agree absolutely absolutely this is you know again as, as i said it, you mustn't be afraid to applaud a, a good deed just because of from they're from a different different party, you know. Uh, and and we we seem to uh, are in a a race to win uh, with without understanding facts and 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 being open to, to it. And and this business about being lost in a computer or a, a yeah. phone or so on and so forth. It's just destructive, destructive to the to the human human contact, right. and uh, you know that's right. we're gonna we we are suffering. Can't say we're going to. We are suffering from all of that. We're suffering from technology. Yeah, yeah, the the human connection, and now what's interesting is now that we're not able to have that connection in the way that we want to. We want to hug. We want to have a good firm handshake. We want to be able to give somebody a kiss on the cheek, like you know we we've always been able to, and we can't do that right now. Um, people are missing that, so it's it's a it's a beautiful time. There's a lot of creativity, a lot of innovation happening, a lot of entrepreneurial. Everybody, we've all had to pivot. We've all had to do different things. Like I can't fly on planes to do TV shoots and different stuff I normally be able to do, and you're there. Um, if we all just take a look at it and we stop and breathe, we could really uh, not return to normal, but maybe to something even more beautiful and better, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, my friend. So you got that fox who's your new friend. See, that came out of this whole thing, right? <laughs> Does he have a name yet? No, we haven't named him. We, have a name. we just got a new cat, too. We call Did it you? Jane. <laughs> Shane. <laughs> Go Shane, yeah, from you know the movie Shane with uh, Jack Palance and Alan Ladd, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Another one of my favorites. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Martha Oliver Swartz says, uh, this is so beautiful. Tony, uh, Karen Levitt says, I have tears. My mom's Italian. My grandfather always came home, hugged, kissed the kids. It was worth it when he came home, saw them. The reason he worked each day, beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunny says, we must collectively get over ourselves and hold hands and hearts across the globe. I agree. Karen says, Tony, you radiate your zest for life through your stories. Yes, he does. Um, we got a nice smile from Victoria and yes, uh, Sonny. And Sonny says, call him Red. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's as much as it is the body of work, when you look at the bio of Tony Lobianco, it's the man. It, it's the man. And that's why you're so loved and beloved by so many, Tony. Uh, and that's why you were on my list of people. You know, this show has only been on for four weeks because uh, I've been so busy with my professional work, but people asked me to create this show. Uh, you were right there as one of the people that I, I wanted to have on this show. And, and I love conversing with you because I just love listening, not only to your stories, but to the depth and the warmth and the heart that is behind everything that you do on TV, on stage, in film, but in life. And that's what makes the man. You're going to have all of these accolades and awards and pages of all this great stuff, but it's really the man. You have the birth date and the date of passing, but it's the dash in between and what you do with that dash that matters most. And you have had a heck of a dash. Thank you, babe. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you for having me. It's been uh, it's been like you, your show is what? How many? How many? How long is it? Four your weeks show? now. Four weeks. Well, I think yeah. we've been on four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> At least you, you know it started out as supposed to be a one-hour uh, extravaganza, and uh, you get. How long right we've been on? We've been on for since. Uh, I think since the ball dropped in Times Square. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Tony says you're a prince. And Victoria says, thank you, Jim and Tony. Thank you. Tony, a real blessing. Bless you really you. are. And I see you got the glass there. And on the show, we always do our toast. So I toast you for yeah, a brilliant toast. career and for so, yeah, there we go. Clang, clang, clang. Mm -hmm. Little, little Venus. And before we go, this is one of the, uh, we have a lot of different props here. We have the Audrey Magini bottle, a bunch of other things, but here's somebody that also wants to send his love. Mr. George Burns. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know that you're right. <laughs> He's part where's of the Gracie? show. Yeah, where's <laughs> Gracie? That's right. I know. He, he's sitting next to the genie bottle there uh, watching over uh, genie. But uh, yeah, this is a replica that is a family heirloom. When he turned 100, my aunt uh, yeah. got this, my Aunt Lillian, and uh, he's part of the, he's my Ed McMahon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tony, well, you're, you're a blessing. You're a blessing. God bless you, Jim, and God bless your, your viewers and, and all and, and all, the, all on this Memorial Day. Yes. We must never, ever forget the, our heroes. Won't forget how many we lost in, uh, in we lost 66,086 mm. in, in all the wars that we fought uh, and and in uh, across across the country, mm -hmm. and France and all those foreign countries, our bodies are there with with uh, 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 crosses and oh yeah and buried there. Absolutely. So God bless God bless our military. Absolutely. God bless you, Jim, and your you as well. And uh, my mother Helen got a chance to say hello to you as well in Florida. So her night, her year is made. Uh, <laughs> she got a chance to Helen. talk to Doctor Joe. Mwah. Thank you so much. And thank uh, you for Jim. <laughs> very beautifully said. And Dina Martin and Sonny Grasso and all the wonderful people with all their beautiful comments coming in and, and celebrating so much. God bless uh, all of us. Uh, amazing show. Enjoyed it greatly. Tony, again, the very best. We will see you again soon. Chat again soon. I'd love to have Elise on the show. That would be, that would be a beautiful, beautiful conversation with her as well. Absolutely. You're very blessed. And, uh, you have earned it all, my friend, and you have a wonderful rest of your evening and Memorial Day. And thanks for sharing Just a Common Soldier and all this time with us. We really, Bye. really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. You take care. Bye-bye now.
Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. Tony and Elise Lobianco here. My dog. <laughs> we want to say how much we enjoyed being on your show this last year. Uh, you interviewed Tony. We were separately. Uh, you interviewed Tony for his acting career and me for my Christian ministry. And we just want to thank you for being such a gracious host and for doing your homework, finding out about us and, uh, and uh, doing such a great job. I also want to apologize for this, by the way. Uh, uh, COVID, you know, has, has taken away our freedom and, uh, and uh, not allowed us to uh, uh, be social uh, or political. And uh, uh, I'll just screw this. It'll, it'll come off. And I like it. She likes it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Absolutely. Bye. Take care, Jim.